Hello beautiful people, I hope you're all doing well. Welcome to today's Applied Mechanics lessons. I just thought of recording a quick video in which I clarify just a couple of concepts with regards to our friction module. I'm realizing that a couple of my students are a bit confused with um, the forces that are acting on a body, especially when it's horizontal versus when it's on an incline. So I'll kind of clarify on both instances, right? So the very first scenario we have on here is a completely flat, horizontal um, plane, and we have a body that has a mass of 100 newtons. And I know before we start arguing that mass is in kgs, you shouldn't worry about that. Worry about whether it's been given to you in newtons or in kgs. That is where the big question is. If I say mass or weight or whatever in newtons, you should in fact be happy that you have it in your unit of choice. You should just raise eyebrows when it's given in kgs because this means you now have to convert it to newtons. That's it. That's the only stress you need to have. If it's given to you in newtons, you move on, right? Now let's look at our body. And when you have a completely horizontal plane or horizontal um, surface like this, and let's say there is a force of the value F that's trying to pull it to the right, right? Already by looking at this, if there is a force pulling it to a certain direction, we already know that there is an opposite and equal frictional force that's pulling it in the opposite direction. That is what you need to know from the onset. If your body is being pulled to the right, there is a force that's pulling it to the left, and that is the force of resistance which we are talking about. If it's moving to the left, then there is a force that is pulling it to the right, that's forcing it not to move. That is the force of resistance we are talking about. Then the next vital thing you need to know, for the fact that your body has a mass, it could be 1 kg, it could be 100 grams, it could literally weigh, um, be a paperweight like a feather. The fact that there is a little bit of weight on there means there is a gravitational pull that is happening on there or that is going on on there, okay? And if there's nothing else mentioned about the body or the force and there's nothing at an incline, then please don't confuse yourself and don't ruin your, your chances of passing because you're looking for problems that are not there. If literally the force is pulling it across a horizontal plane, then it's pulling it across a horizontal plane. There's no need to complicate things. Then we know that when you are now calculating, right, because how I normally do it, I'd say the forces that are acting on the body um, and equating them to the forces that are resisting the movement, the forces that are keeping it stationary. Then the forces that are moving it would be our force F. Then the stationary forces in here would be your force of resistance. Then we would know the equation of our resistance force would be your perpendicular forces to the surface um, multiplied by your coefficient of friction. Okay. Then from on there, we already know that, okay, what's perpendicular to the surface? It will be our mg in this case. Is there anything else? No. Then you multiply it by your given coefficient of friction. Then from that point on, you are able to calculate the value of f. It's as easy as that if it's on a completely flat plane on a completely horizontal surface. Right? Now this is where it gets interesting. Where um, it's still a completely flat horizontal surface. You have your body on there, but the force being applied is at an angle. Let's put this as an angle of 30 degrees to the horizontal, okay? Now, your body is still on a completely horizontal plane, still in Newtons. We don't want to complicate life. And then now we need to consider the forces that are acting on it, okay? So from our vectors module, we know that whenever there's a thing at an angle, you need to break it down into its perpendicular and parallel components. This would essentially be your F cos of 30. If at this point you still need to ask why it's F cos of 30, then I'd highly recommend that you catch up with the components video that is on the channel. Okay, don't panic. We're not leaving you behind, but I think it would be a good chance for you to catch up with that one right now. Okay, so now we have our components. We have our F cos of 30 and we have our F sine of 30. This is parallel to the surface. 
This is perpendicular to the surface. You'll see why it's important for you to identify these things, okay? So now that we're trying to pull our body to the right, which of these two forces do you think is assisting us to pull it to the right? If you said the F cos of 30, you would have guessed right. That is the force that is helping us. So if you look at this scenario, in this instance, this would have been our F cos of 30, okay? It's helping us pull it, right? Then now we're not done. The fact that there's something moving our body in this direction, it means there is an equal but opposite force that's pulling it in the opposite direction. We have our resistance force. We have a force that is um, providing friction that is essentially trying to stop this body on here from moving forward okay and then that's not it we have our gravitational force as well our mg which is in newtons okay i hope we are still on the same page then when you now need to equate your forces the forces acting on it you equate them to the forces that are resisting the movement okay forces acting on it and remember, we've already um, determined which force would assist us to pull it to the right. It's our F cos of 30, right? Is there any other force that is helping our F cos of 30 to pull it to the right? No, there isn't. Next, there's just resistance force of or frictional forces. I use these terms interchangeably, right? Then now we just need to break this down. Remember the formula for your... Um, frictional resistance force is your perpendicular forces times your coefficient of friction, right? Now we need to find these perpendicular forces that are essentially keeping our body in the same position. First off, we have our Mg. It's already there. It is keeping the body in position. It's pulling it down, and that force acts perpendicularly to the surface. You have your surface. You have a force of gravity moving that way. But that's not all. We also have this perpendicular component it's just in the opposite direction on there so it will be minus our f sine of 30 is that all is there any other force that is essentially trying to keep the body in the same position if your answer is no then you can multiply it by your coefficient of friction for some i'm aware that it gets confusing as to then what happened to this expression we expressed it in terms of perpendicular forces multiplied by your mu and your mg as well as your f sine 30 are the perpendicular forces that are acting on your body here then if that's all you have then the next step is just to multiply it with your coefficient of friction from this point on i normally say from this point on it's no longer about mechanics it is now about mathematics if your maths is not in check I'm afraid you will not be able to get anything beyond this point, okay? From this point on, it's all about manipulating this in order to make sure that at the end of the day, you have F as a subject of your formula equals to, and then you'd probably get an answer on the other side of the equation. I hope this kind of clarifies the different scenarios we have, especially pertaining to when you have a completely flat surface. In the next video, I'll get into how we deal with the forces when you have an inclined surface because that kind of adds a very big cherry on top of our cake, but I do not want to bombard you with information. That's it from me from now. If you have any questions, you know what to do. Please don't be shy and I'll see you in the next one. Adios.